Why is it important that we have the Holy Spirit? There was a devil worshiper. He had a testimony online where he said that he had been given the job by the dark forces to attack a certain Christian and that person um, he was told to attack them and um, they normally do it during sleep during nighttime that's when they practice the dark arts and he had waited for this person to because this job was given to another I think a, another a devil and they couldn't do it they hired him they, they asked him to do it and they they weren't able to penetrate into his aura because this guy has just non-stop been in prayer and so he says he just starts waiting he waits around for this guy to go to sleep and at 10 o'clock he checks in on this guy in the spiritual realm and the guy is still praying he checks in at 11 still praying one o'clock in the morning still praying and there's not a time when this guy's not praying so he thought this was really odd and he wasn't able to penetrate into the spiritual armor of this person and he later finds out when he went to look in the spirit realm that the Holy Spirit has been protecting him and is with him during sleep in prayer so what it what it appears to this devil worshiper was that they could just hear that this person was praying but it was actually the Holy Spirit in that person that was guarding this person while he was sleeping and at all hours of the day so there was no place where he can penetrate the the arrows or the hooks the dark stuff that he was practicing and this was his testimony from the other side and one thing that I actually forgot to mention when I went to the Tao the Tao, um, my mother's, the, the Tao teaching, the place where they had the shrine and the idol worshiping and the Buddha statues. When I went there to renounce my Taoist membership and that very day when I said that I'm, I've given my heart to God, to Jesus, that moment that I said that, there was because I had my eyes closed and I was talking to the statues giving them my renouncement and it was during that when I was knelt down that I felt a piece of hair in my trying like around the corner of my nose and I exhaled really strongly so I can force out air in my nose in I thought there was some kind of hair on my nose it just felt like hair but I had my eyes closed so I didn't know I didn't think anything of it but when I finally opened my eyes after saying what I needed to say on the corner of my eye I saw there was a fruit fly it was a tiny fruit fly on the right of me and even in front of me and I realized that little tingly feeling on my nose was not from my hair but from the fruit fly trying to land on my nose or trying to go in my nostril and because they had a lot of uh i think originally they had fruits that were set on these altars as um you know, to give blessings to get blessings so that was the ritual that they did and it caused them to have tiny fruit flies and I remember the days when the fruit flies were not so tiny. For some reason, these fruit flies are very tiny. And one of my friends 
previously had told me that these fruit flies fly into his nose. And I wasn't aware of it until he said it because I know sometimes they get really close to my face and I feel like they were around my nose area. But I didn't recall ever having one trying to come in my nose. But when he said that, I said I felt, you know, they was also around they were also around my face, like looking for entry in. And one time I was walking and this was in China, I was walking on the street and it was, there was some wind, but it wasn't a lot of wind. And all of a sudden, as I was walking full pace, I felt something on my nose and it wasn't really strong, it was just a tiny feeling like something was a little bit itchy on my nose. So when I blew my nose out. I blew out a tiny little insect and it was like the fruit fly. That tiny little fruit fly and it went it actually did go in my nose. So my friend was right. These little fruit flies go in my nose. So it's a coincidence, yes, but there was more than once and then it happened again when I was at renouncing my participation with the Tao people in, at their at their altar. It happened again, and I'm just reminded that when we're in the Holy Spirit, we are protected. But in those places, even though they have an altar and they have um, a good heart and kind heart and wanting to bring enlightenment to people, but I have this feeling that they're not protected. I don't know why. It's It comes in the form of these little things, you know, and, and then I can get into this whole fruit fly thing because there was a lady online, she, stu she was studying chemtrails, and she realized that a lot of these were nanobots, but in the biological form. So then she found little bug-like things, tiny ones, that were being sprayed into the air. And they seemed to have a hive mind, and you could see it in the surveillance camera when it's around dawn or when it's rainy, you'll see these tiny lights, and they're, they look like sprays of, like, it look like sprays of rain, but they're so tiny, it's just like a speck and they have a direction and they, they, they turn and they, they move almost like hive, like the hive mind. And um, so that, but that's something else that we can, we don't need to get into now. And, um, and I recall when I was in the Vipassana, retreat which is a 10-day free retreat where they feed you they take you into eight hours of meditation and we just sit there we're not supposed to look at anyone we're not supposed to talk to anyone and even there i wasn't safe because i had the really strange experience of having a, t a speck of blood show up the next day and that very night i felt an uneasiness in the energy around me and I couldn't sleep and the next day I finally decided I'm just gonna fall asleep even though I felt that it, I wasn't safe I felt an anxiety and a panic feeling in the middle of the night waking up I never had that experience I had it there while I was in the Vipassana retreat um, and years later I told this story to somebody else and his girlfriend tells me that she had almost the same experience in the same Vipassana place. She also woke up with a drip of a speck of blood that was on her blanket and it wasn't there the night before and it was it seemed like it was made hours before. It didn't dry up, it wasn't brown, it was bright red. And 
she knows going to bed th that night. She didn't have that before. And um, so she actually was able to integrate my experience with hers. And so that what that tells me is that even when we're meditating, we're not protected. Even though, even though while we're seeking an enlightenment, our bodies are not protected. And even while they say there's protection, because we're doing it in a group setting, but evidently we weren't protected. So if I were to go into meditation now, I would want the Holy Spirit to be praying over me and to be in constant prayer with me while I'm sleeping, while I'm meditating, or even if I leave my body, that I am completely protected. And I feel that the Holy Spirit does that for us.